Hey guys, Casey Ferris, thanks for checking out another video of mine here on the YouTube. My goodness, today we are talking about tracking things inside of Blackmagic Fusion, aka the Blackmagic Fusion tab inside of DaVinci Resolve, because Resolve has grown to be an uncontrollable monster that will eventually turn on us and murder us all. Or it's just something that we'll use conveniently for uh, post-production. Either way, I wanted to go over a little bit of tracking inside of Fusion because it's it's actually really neat. I've been playing around with it a little bit. Wanted to show you guys at least what I know so far. All right, if you're unfamiliar with Fusion, here's how it works. There's a nodes panel down here. It's pretty much a map of what you're doing to your image. You have your inspector, which gives you all sorts of different options depending on what node you have selected. Then we have two viewers up here, the left viewer and the right viewer. And then of course, our we have an effects library over here. You can also open up your different clips using this little button here and your media pool which is kind of behind your effects library. So let's take a look at our shot. This guy is super confused about being in the forest, which is great. So what we're gonna do is track one of these trees and stick a word to it because, you know, titles and stuff. First thing we need to do is track this. There's a bunch of ways that you can do that, but I really like a planar tracker. If you've ever used Mocha, you'll know exactly what a planar tracker is. I'm gonna go over to tools and go down to tracking. And right here it says planar tracker. I'm just gonna grab this and put this in the line in between media in and media out. So media in is like our starting image, media out is what we end with. And by the way, these little dots right here, these are the viewers, the left and right viewer. So if I click the left dot right here, it will load it into the left viewer and see how media out has the right viewer selected. You can also hit one or two on your keyboard to quickly select that. But what I'm gonna do is track this image using this planar tracker node. I'm gonna click on it, and there's a whole bunch of options you probably don't really need to know about. And under tracker here, I'm gonna say hybrid point slash area. You might be able to use point. I've been using hybrid point slash area. And then you pretty much just draw a shape that you wanna track. So I'll track this tree right here. Okay, boom. So I've made a shape, and what it's gonna do is look at the inside of this shape and track it throughout the shot. And actually what I'm gonna do is go to the very beginning of the shot because I found it's a little bit picky on where you start and end your track. So I'm just gonna start at the beginning because I tend to have good luck with that. So let's just put it on that tree in the beginning. And then I'm gonna click this button right here, which is the track the rest of the shot button. And we'll just let it do its magic. All right, so now that our planar tracker is done, we can kinda sweep through this. And it looks like it's just jacked up like crazy, but the video goes slower than the track data. So it's looking pretty good. Now, how do we actually stick something to this tree? That's what I think is really cool about Fusion is the way that it can do that. Now that I have all this tracking data, I can hit this button that says create planar transform. And what that's gonna do is make a new node that has all that tracking data applied into it. So if I click on this node, you can see these little white tick marks. These are all keyframes. That means that there's data there. So how do we use this? Well, we pretty much apply it to whatever we want to composite on top of this image. So probably easiest thing to do is just make a text title. And since I had this selected when I hit text, it makes a merge node for me, which I do want, but I don't need the planar transform hooked into that. I'm gonna put my text over here, my merge node here, and I could just get rid of these and hook up my media into my merge node on the background. Just set my planar tracker node to the side and then connect my merge output to my media out. And let's add some text in the text node. Hello. And all I need to do to apply this transform to this text is just connect the text through the planar transform. Easiest way to do that is grab this node, hold down shift and put it on this line that connects the merge and the text. And now look what happens. Move back and forth and the text is stuck to the shot. I can grab my text node and move my text over to the tree. And now we have it stuck to the tree. Look at that. See, that wasn't that bad. That was actually really easy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so let's make this at least a little more interesting. And we'll put this in like a little tool tip thing or something. And the really cool thing is if I wanna add other things to this graphic, I can do that with a merge node. So let's say I wanna add like maybe a background behind this. I can go to generator and just click background with my text layer selected. 
like that. Ironically, it makes a merge node, putting the background as the foreground, but whatever. Let's make the text the foreground, the background the background, because that's science. And I can add a mask to my background by going to mask. Let's just do a rectangle, and I can move that around to be something nice and tasty. And because this is all going into a merge node, which is going into the planar transform, everything's still stuck to the tree. So it's not perfect, it's a little wiggly, but you get the idea. And the more I work with nodes, the more I realize like that it's actually pretty useful to work this way because you can really see everything at a glance, how things work. This is my beginning shot that's getting merged with something and it's text and a background with a mask on it put together with a transform and then it's rendered. And so without diving into all the effects and everything, I can just see at a glance what's going on, which is really cool. It's also really easy to apply effects to the separate parts of the image. Like, oh, I need to color grade this background, but I don't really want to color grade my graphics. I can select my original image and hit this color corrector button. That gives me a color corrector node. And I can do my color grading just on that background without worrying about that foreground. So there you go. There's a little bit of tracking, a little bit of match moving inside of DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion tab. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more tutorials on Fusion, DaVinci Resolve, color grading, post-production, all of those things, make sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. Thanks for watching.